Hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do talking coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. Join the Discord. I got a bunch of few stuffs going on in there, dude. You got some interesting perks of joining. So, uh, we're doing valid Sudoku, t- Sudoku today as problem number thirty-six. Medium problem: Determine if a nine by nine Sudoku board is valid. Uh, only the filled cells need to be validated according to the following rules. Each row must contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. Each column must ta- contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. Each of the 9 3x3 three three sub boxes of the grid must contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. Pretty easy rules. Um, basically, what we're going to be given is a Sudoku board. We want to return if it's valid, and it's valid based on these rules. If these rules are met, if these conditions are met, then uh, it is valid and we return true. The method is a Boolean value, is valid Sudoku board. Uh, so if it's good, if everything's good, we return true. If everything's bad, we return false. Okay, great. Um, and the rules are pretty simple too. Each row just has to contain, so each row of the nine by nine board, like this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row. Uh, one has to contain the numbers one to nine with no repetition, meaning all the numbers have to be unique. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, one, nine. There's nine spots, nine per row. And uh, there has to be the numbers 1 to 9 and no duplicates, right? It's pretty straightforward. Same with the columns. There's 9 spots, 1 to 9, no repeating numbers. And then there's these little sub boxes. You can see them. It's kind of like highlighted bold um, outline right here. You can see it right here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And uh, these little uh, sub boxes have 9 squares and they have to contain 1 through 9 without repeating uh, numbers also. So you can see this is the representation of the grid above as a 2D array of uh, chars, characters. So, uh, you know, you see it's 5, 3 are the first two, 5, 3 are the first two here. But empty spaces, there's a bunch of empty spaces, those are denoted by periods. So it says uh, the Sudoku board is partially filled where empty cells are filled with the character period. Okay, so empties are periods and then we have all these numbers. So all we have to do to make sure that this is a valid Sudoku board is to make sure that each row has no duplicates, each column has no duplicates, and uh, each of these little sub three by three squares has no duplicates. Um, in this case, you can see we have the 2D char grid, but we get return false. It's not valid because you can look at this three by three uh, upper square right here and there's two eights. So that's a repeating character. That would be as if this five was an eight. That's two eights. You cannot have two of the same number. It has to be one through nine. All those characters, no uniques. I think we get how it works now, right? It's pretty spe- uh, pretty basic. So since it's a 9 by 9 grid, traversing it isn't really a time complexity issue, right? It's not like this is scaling. So if we were to just traverse it regularly, uh, looping through rows is the outer for loop and looping through uh, columns is the inner for loop. Uh, You just use J for the columns. So really, this isn't going to take any time, right? This isn't a lot of data to traverse, right? 9 times 9, you know, that's not that's nothing that's going to take a few like that's going to take no time at all and when you're coding um so all we'd want to do in uh, off intuition but we we can solve this problem as if like let's say it's n by n board that would make it like they might ask that as a follow-up so we want to implement this in the best time complexity let's say if we were looping up to n like m rows or n columns like then it becomes a little bit different. So if it's a million by a million, then we have to, you know, actually be concerned about time and space complexity, right? So the intuition that I have is like, first of all, we're dealing with unique values. I always tell you guys, if we're dealing with unique values, hash set is the way to go. Hash sets are a perfect data structure because you can put things into them easily, constant time lookups. So you can put things in, you constant time look up what's in the hash set and they only store unique values. So there's never going to be any duplicates. So it's a perfect thing here whenever you're dealing with unique ha- uh, values, think of hash sets. So my first intuition is to make a hash set at each loop through the rows, you can make it of integers or whatever you want to call it. So you could say row vals is equal to new hash set. Sorry. Uh, You can make column values, and then you can make the board values. So I'd have three hash sets, and as I loop through, I would uh, put the values in and make sure there's no duplicates, and that's it for each of the rows, for the columns. But there's actually a brilliant little trick solution that I don't really come up with very often, like something as clever as this, 
but really you can do this sometimes is you can use strings to your advantage and that's what I'll show you who wrote the solution earlier but I'm going to code it out really quick so that you understand basically what we're, do we're going to do is we're going to take a hash set of uh, strings and uh, of type string and we're just going to call it scene or whatever you want to call it and um, we're just going to do this casual loop through and we're going to get the current character. So the current character we're loop looping through will just be, you know, current val or whatever is going to just be board of i of j where i is rows, j is columns. Uh, if the current val is not empty, if it's empty, then we're not even going to worry about it. Um, then we're going to look at these numbers and we're going to put them into the scene. We're going to put numbers that we've seen into the hash set. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add them in the hash set and we're going to say uh, the current val, we're going to add it as a string so that we don't need three separate hash sets coming in on this inner loop here. We just need one outer hash set and we can just use strings to make this a little more simple. We could just say current val found in row and then you could just say the row number. And this will make it so that all of the rows values are separate because it's going to say found in row. It's not going to, uh, it's going to put found in row and then it's going to put the specific row number. So as the rows increase, it'll only, uh, it'll just go, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or seven, eight. And uh, yeah, it just keeps them separate so that you don't need extra hash sets. Let me know if you have questions about that. I feel like I am explaining that, but it just makes it, cause you have these strings separating them. Uh, so it's not going to like a column value that's found in uh, a different row isn't going, we're not gonna find values in different rows and run into an error because we're going to have these distinct row numbers. We're gonna have these distinct strings for each for to know that it's a row value and we're not dealing with like boxes or columns so yeah it's just a way to use strings to your advantage to separate things and decrease the number of data structures in this case uh so you could say found in like sub box or whatever and we could just say i divided by three and then we'll add dash um you know, uh, whatever, j divided by three. This is just to, you divide by three on the row and column to get the current sub box, right? Because it's, uh, the sub boxes are three rows and three columns width uh, in length. So you just have to divide the current row number by three because if you're in the third row, then you're going to do nine divided by three to get the, that you're in the first sub box or whatever, you know what I mean? And then if you're in the third column, nine divided by three to get the first, et cetera. So you just got to divide by three in the row and column to get the current sub box that you're at. So it'll be the first sub box dash the first, uh, yeah, one dash one or whatever, you know what I mean? So um, that's pretty much it. And uh, you're going to be adding the values as you see them. We, sep we reduce the amount of data structures using strings. And uh, also what we're gonna do is you can actually use the add method to check for duplicates because when you're adding, you there is a return value when you're adding to a hash set and it says it returns true if the element is not present. So if the element's not present, that's what we want, that's good. So we're gonna say not, if it's not true, that's bad. So we're gonna say if it's uh, this isn't good or uh, this isn't good. You gotta put the not symbol. Or this isn't good. Then we're gonna say that it's false. Cause there we go. That should be fine. Then we just return false. And uh, if we make it through everything, we just return true. And that's the whole problem. Not too difficult there. You can use the thing that this method, this uh, question I think teaches the most is uh, that there are little tricks like using strings to reduce data structures. And there's also little tricks like um, using this add method as instead of checking, okay, does this hash set already contain the value? Uh, we can use the add method because the add method all checks if it's contained because it says it returns false if the element's already present. So if it returns, if the element's already present, we're going to get false. So we just negate that with all these nots, check for ors. So this will basically just check if any of these, if we found a duplicate in the row, the duplicate in the column, or the duplicate in the sub box, then uh, this will check for that and we can return that it's invalid based on that condition. So that's pretty much it for this problem. Shout out to this dude. I would know. I would have never come up with uh, this 
thing. It would have taken me forever to think of this. This is really clever by this dude right here. Um, so shout out to you, bro, uh, for this little uh, string trick right here. Very smart, very intelligent. The regular way is you can also see in the um, discussion is just something like this, right? You're looping through and then you make the just the regular hash set for the rows, columns, and cube. The individual cubes you could check for the characters uh, make sure they're not empty and then just get the current row and column to find the right box and you know just add to the specific hash maps and uh, yeah this one uses the add method too to do that check it's basically the same thing the string one just reduces the data structures but that's pretty much it i think this is a really easy problem um and you probably won't get it in an interview because especially with the nine by nine you're not like you're going to, I think more commonly, I've never gotten this in like a ton of interviews I've done. More commonly, you're going to get uh, questions that scale. This one seems, it's a little bit of a weird question too, but then again, it's also somewhat popular. So you could get it. Good to know. Good to know about this ad method in Java and uh, good to know about thinking outside of the box of the strings. Other than that, it wasn't too bad. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Oh, also like and subscribe. All right. See ya.